Welcome. And Baruch Ata Adonai Loheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvotav V'tivanu Asok B'divrei Torah. Amen. And uh, I'm glad some of you enjoyed the foray into the Mishneh Torah. Uh, there's just so much. They just, you know, it's like there's not enough hours in the day and enough personal energy to do everything and a mind that can absorb all these things except these rare individuals who are just so brilliant. So we're going to go back into uh, the brilliance of the Torah and the brilliance of Rashi uh, in explaining it. And maybe, maybe, maybe a little bit of Torah Tamima. Just the enjoyment that people have had in these in analyzing these words. So Moses, of course, continuing to speak to the Jewish people, to the Israelites assembled prior to his own demise, trying to leave them an ethical will. So he goes on to say to them, Enechem haro'ot, it is your eyes who have that have seen eight asher asa Hashem baal pa'or, that which God did to Baal Pa'or. And of course, again, referring to that very sad moment after God has prevented Bil'am from cursing the Jewish people, uh, unfortunately, uh, being uh, the ability of the men, the Jewish men, to shoot themselves in the foot and who go whoring after the Moabite women and to get seduced into actually uh, worshiping Baal Pa'or this idol of the Moabites. And of course, I think it was 24,000 of them that are killed. And that's what Moses is referring to right here. So he says, Ki kol ha'ish asher halach acharei va'al pa'or, because every man who went after, in other words, who followed va'al pa'or, hishmido Hashem elokecha mikirbecha, the Lord your God, has destroyed him from your midst. So we really do have choices, right? Incidentally, the whole notion of Baal Pa'or, uh, this name Baal Pa'or has connotations of lewdness and disgust and stuff like that. So anyway, going on. And these are the words that we say every time we take the Torah out and before we read it. Va'atem hadvekim, but you who cleave or cling, badonai Elohechem, but the Lord your God, chayim kulchem hayom. You are alive, to, you are all alive today. And this very taking very seriously, of course, uh, which I know at this point you are all very aware of, um, how seriously we take this notion of the Torah and its laws and studying it and understanding it and, and making it a very central part of our very uh, DNA. So anyway, that's, I, I, whenever I read this verse, if I may share with you personally, I think of my father because my dad loved this verse, he did. And uh, there's seven words in this verse, and he used this verse to count the number of wraparounds on his armed tefillin, as when you wrap the tefillin around your arm, seven words. Re, uh, let's see, re, re, a, c, limadati <clears> etchem <throat> chukim umishpatim, I have taught you, uh, statutes and laws, ka'ashir tzivani Adonai Elohai, as the Lord my God has commanded me. La'asot came to do, to perform this, to do this, be'kerev ha'aretz, in the midst of the land, asher atim ba'im shama l'rishda, in which you are coming there to inherit. So again, uh, it's not just simply some kind of nationalistic uh, desire or whatever. Uh, there's a purpose to this, having to do with the idea of human beings, certainly in this case, the Jewish people, 
pers personally and collectively performing the divine will. That here in the world, in this reality in which we live, uh, there's a sense in which the divine word has an influence in a very deep kind of way, and to be able to do it in this particular place. Ushmartim, and you shall guard. Asitim, and you shall or guard them, and you shall perform them. Kihi chokhmatchem uvinatchem, because it is. I'd have to add parenthetically the source of your wisdom, your wisdom, and your understanding. In the eyes of the nations. In other words, in other people, he's going to expand on this uh, <clears throat> idea that other nations are going to see the example that the Jewish people set. In that they will hear all these statutes. For Amru, and they're going to say, in other words, we know Amar I mean think, right? Rak am chacham v'navon. So uh, literally, rak just usually means only, right? But I think we just have to, for English, we'd say how, how, or what a wise, what a wise chacham, and understanding, am. Um, uh, or what a wise nation, an understanding nation, Hagoy Hagadol Hazeh, this great nation. Yes? I was just going to look at the at the Targum. It says, Lechod Am Chakim. Lechod, I don't know, in Aramaic, I don't know, but... Um, it means only, it means like, uh -huh. uh, uh, right? In other words, they alone, something like that. Yeah. This great nation is, is uh, the only great nation. In other words, again, the idea of this special position that the, the Jewish people have. Um, but I mean, you know, uh, again, I, I like to hesitate over stuff that sounds like it's growing on a little on a little level. But I think on the other hand, He's speaking, it's, I don't think it's too different that when you're a grandparent, you know that your grandchildren are brilliant and beautiful. And, and so it's, it's a loving statement as well. well. Or, or you could say it's a statement of, of uh, praise to the lawgiver, you know, the yes, laws. In other words, these people of living by these laws is not that they're innately wonderful, but that they're, uh, Abiding by very wise laws. Yes, all that, all, all that. Uh, let's see if there's a Rashi on this because I think there may be. <clears throat> I just okay, right here we are, right. So it's lovely. Uh, the, I love the way Rashi is so sensitive to not letting us get away with generalities and trying to put some uh, ground, you know, some groundwork to the. Um, to these generalities, Ushmartem. So I believe Ushmartem has, in fact, the, the pronoun, you shall guard them, okay? Uh, and the reason why is that the, uh, the, the, the fact that it's Ushmartem, like it's saying Ushmartem uh, Otam, right? You shall guard them. And he says, this refers to Mishnah. Now, of course, we do have Mishnah, but I believe that he's saying here is learning. So Ushmartim, when it, which literally means you shall guard them, it means studying. It means Talmud Torah, right? Because the word Mishnah itself means learning, learning, whereas uh, um, Torah means teaching, right? So... So the idea of Mishnah, of learning the Torah, it's a two-way street. Va'asitim, and the word va'asitim, kemashma, or means just as it sounds. In other words, you'll study them, and then you'll practice them. You can't practice them if you haven't studied them to begin with. So that's how he's linking these two words together. Ki hu chokhmat chem, it's actually ki hi chokhmat 
Hashem, for she is your wisdom, Uvina Hashem. I love the way wisdom is understood as feminine. Okay. Uh, it's uh, and your understanding. So etc. Bezot techashvu chachamim unavonim. So he's explaining through this you will be considered wise and understand and understanding the ene haamim in the eyes of the nations. Again, think about it. It's leading by example. What a powerful, if not obvious, concept, right? Uh, going on, Kimi Goy Gadol, for who is so he's he's follow, Moses is following up his thought. He says, for in this case, me usually means who. I guess we would say what in English. For what great nation? Okay, or is there is there a, a nation as great? Asher lo Elohim krovim elav which to him, literally, I'm going to translate this word for word, right? Which to him, God is close to him, right? So what nation has a God so close to them? Kadonai Eloheinu, as the Lord our God. Bechol koreinu, whenever we call a love, whenever we call upon him, and of course, I, I know, uh, for me personally, uh, these words have traction. These words have traction. And they, you know, reading this material and recognizing its age and its, its power and its influence, you know, I've tried to be open to exactly that. Uh, but I will tell you that, you know, knowing to some extent uh, the degree to which one can, in fact, uh, cling to God by performing mitzvot, you know, I, I realize how far short I come from doing that. But my sense is that it has more to do with direction than looking back and saying, oh gosh, I performed all these mitzvahs. It's a process. It's a process. Umi goi gado, and what, what great nation, you know, Asher lo chukim. These are what the nations are saying, right? Who have chukim umishpatim, statutes and ordinances tzadikim, righteous, kechol haTorah hazot, like this entire Torah, Asher anochi noten lifnechem hayom, which I am placing before you today. <clears throat> so Rashi talks about, you know, what do we mean by righteous? Righteous statutes and ordinances, right? Chukim umishpatim sadikim, and he simply says, all it, what it means is hagunim. They are worthy concepts, umakubalim, and they're acceptable ideas. Um, and again, you know, when it says kol uh, haTorah, right, the entire Torah, um, for me that means two things. One is that you can't pick and choose necessarily. And those parts of the Torah, which as you already know, I find difficulty. I try to understand it in a, in a broader context and to try and find interpretations that, that make sense to me and that are consistent with my understanding of God's love of humanity. But he says, only be careful, take warning, right? And be very diligent, right? In guarding your, literally it means your soul, but it can mean also simply in guarding yourselves. Only be careful, be careful. Pentishkach, lest you forget et hadvarim, the words, Asher ra'u, or the things, right? The things, the experiences, Asher ra'u e'necha, which your own eyes have seen. Ropen yasuru milvavcha, and lest they turn away from your hearts. This kol yamei chayecha, all the days of your life. In other words, at some point, in other words, to be constantly vigilant. 
to make sure you don't forget these particular things. So you look at look at the Seder, for example, Pesach, how we, we go over these things and we try to remember the past and we try to learn from the past and we try to show appreciation that our lives in so many ways are a reflection of the appreciation that we have, right? Um, we meet Sraim Galtanu, right? From Egypt, you redeemed us. And looking down through our own history at the fact that here we are still existing as a Jewish people and, and giving God a, appreciation for that and it being using that to strengthen our own commitment to performing divine will. Vohodatam levanecha, you shall make known, you shall make them known to your children and your grandchildren. Let's take a look here. <clears throat> Sorry. Let's see. Uh, yeah. So there's this Rashi here going back. Okay. Rak hishamer lecha, right? Only be very careful, right? Be on, be on warning. Lest you forget these things. As keshelo tishkachu otam, so that, right, when you don't forget them, if you don't forget them, the ta'asum al emtatam, and you try to do them emtatam, emet, truth, right, as sincerely, right, or in, 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 in the fullest sense right? In that case, right, you will be considered wise and understanding. But if you pervert them, because, in other words, through forgetfulness, through forgetting them, you will be considered fools. So, again, uh, the Sifre, I'm sure, uh, Rashi's getting this from, but saying, you know, that's the force of the rock. In other words, only if you don't forget these things, only if you are very meticulous about and, and um, forthcoming about doing these things. It isn't the service, right? Yom Asher, referring specifically to the day Asher Amadata, the day in which you stood before the Lord your God, the Chorev, at Chorev. And we know that Chorev refers to Mount Sinai. The Emor Hashem Eli, when, the, when Hashem said to me, Hakheli et Ha'am, gather for me the nation, the Ashmi'em et Dvarai, and I will cause them to hear my words, Asher Yil Nadun, so that they learn the Oti Kol Hayamim, to fear me all the days, Asher Hem Chayim Al Adama, all the days which they live or they endure on the earth. And they will also teach them to their children. So, you know, we've talked about this concept of being God fearing and uh, how what it means is that we take God very seriously. Uh, we, we don't, um, we look at this stuff and, and we try to look at it and see what we can do. Uh, very seriously about it and take seriously the words that are given to us, right? Yom Asher Amadata, the day in which you stood, he says, Musaf al Mikra Shalamala Mimenu. It actually, this verse actually depends on a verse that occurred much earlier on. And that's the verse that it says, Asher ra'u enecha, which your eyes saw. So this material here, right? Okay. Um, 
is is uh, here is uh, a parenthetical, and I believe we actually go up here. Uh, let's see when he says the day that uh, that you saw, and let's take a look. Let's go look at all the way back. I believe. Um, Excuse me. Uh, nope, maybe, may, I, I thought he was going back, let's see, maybe even further. Uh, nope, okay. So that's what he's saying. It's got, it's got to do with that part, what you saw, what you saw. And he's, and, uh, but I believe this, this area here is, uh, parenthetical to saying, you know, think back on that time at that time, right? Uh, let's see. Yeah. Okay. So this is this right? Okay. So he is saying it's referring to this. Forgive me. Again, this every time, every lesson there is some area where I have to go back and look carefully and correct myself. So here, so this is the Asherat Weinecha, right? And this here is parenthetical and he's going back. And what Rashi's telling us is this is going back to that previous section, right? Yom Asher Amadata Bechorev. In other words, that day, look back at that day when you stood at Mount Sinai at Chorev, where you saw the voices and the lapid is uh, like the torches, right? Remember the mountain was on fire. There were these loud sounds. If you recollect uh, at some other point reading about the uh, giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai and what a, a scary moment it was in many ways, right? So he says, right, Yil Madun, Yalfun, this is the Hebrew, the, sorry, the Aramaic. Yalfun la'atzmam, in other words, learn for yourselves. Yilameidun ya'alfun la'acherim, and that's to teach. So it's interesting that in Hebrew, right, the words for learn and teach are related here. So here we go. Asher yilmedun, right, so that you learn. And then Yelameidun, right? For et Pnehem Yelameidun. It's a different, it's called a different binyan, right? Um, this, I believe, is a kal. It's called the the simple, literally, okay? And this is Yelameid, is a, um, a, I think it's, yeah, it's, it's a PL form, an intensive form, but in this sense, it is a causative form. Uh, going on. Vatikravun Vataamdun Tahatahar, and you draw near you drew near and you stood at the foot of the mountain. Literally it means under the mountain, right? Fahahar bo er ba'esh, and the mountain was burning with fire ad leif hashamayim to the very heart of heaven. Choshech darkness. Anan, cloud, the Arafel, and mist, fog. Describing what it was like. And, and my feeling is in here, in, in you know, reading these particular descriptions, I believe they are, they are trying to awaken within us feelings. In other words, asking ourselves, you know, how would you feel if you were experiencing this all around you? And I also suspect that they are trying to give us an association of how powerful this really is and how significant and how life um, influencing this all is, the, the power that it has to affect our lives and our feelings and our thoughts, etc. Vaidaber Hashem Alechem Mitoch Haesh. And the Lord, the Lord spoke to you from the midst of the fire. Kol dvarim atem shomim, the sound of words you hear 
or you heard, right? Utmuna einchem ruim, but you do did not see any picture. You don't see any likeness. Zulati ko, only a voice. And of course, the idea of not worshiping any physical images or physical things. Vayaged lachem, and it was, uh, he told you, et brito, his covenant, asher tziva etchem lasot, which he commanded you to perform. So again, this idea of a brit is an agreement, it is a relationship, um, it is a quid pro quo, and, and it's saying, right, that there is this relationship essentially that um, we are trying to establish that our tradition speaks of and, and takes quite seriously uh, all the way back to this particular moment. Aseret Hadvarim, the 10 words. Vayichtavim, and he wrote them. Al Shnei Luchot, on two tablets. Avanim, of stone, of stone. So again, uh, going on. Vooti tziva Hashem, and me as for me, Hashem commanded ba'et hahi at that time, the lamed etchem to teach you, chukim umishpatim, right, statutes and ordinances, la asot chem otam, for you to practice. Right, to do them. Ba'aretz in the land, asher atem ovrim shama l'rishta, which you are uh, crossing over there, there to inherit. Rashi, v'oti tziva Hashem ba'et ha'hi and and the Lord uh, commanded me at that time to teach you. And he says, this refers to the Torah Shabal Peh, this refers to the oral Torah. And by oral Torah, we should understand that that essentially means applied Torah. So the reason is that they heard these words and you had that element of the Torah, which is understood as the written Torah. And the fact that Moses is commanded to teach the Israelites to do them, right? To practice them. And that's the nature of applied Torah and our understanding that there's theoretical Torah and then there's applied Torah. And you start off, you know, uh, learning theoretical Torah and then you try to apply that Torah. Okay. All right. Um, David, if you're still there, uh, I'd like to do this in memory of your grandmother. He is not here. Wait, all right. Well, I'm sorry he left already. Okay. Uh, and it is eight o'clock at least at Pacific time. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, okay. We're going to have to stop here, I'm afraid, for this year. Um, and of course, he is developing. The, uh, the, his encouraging the Jewish people. This is the very nature of a ethical will, right? To try and uh, make, you know, make sure that the future generations are ethical and that they, they think about these values, et cetera, et cetera. So I'll stop here and um, I'll stop the share. If anyone wants to say anything before I close the recording. Any comments? Any reaction? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I uh, say the Shema when I wake up in the morning and when I go to sleep at night. Yes. But uh, yes. I, but there's a lot of times I don't even say the uh, 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 prayers after meal. And I don't know, maybe the Lord says, if you don't say the prayers after meal, that's a no-no. I mean, there's a lot of times I don't I don't say all the prayers, uh, all the mitzvahs, and, and, and I feel guilty about it. But, that's the only thing. <laughs> well, you, know, you do I, the best you can. 
that's what's really the most important thing. And you try to do better the next day. Okay. That's what I tell kids. <laughs> well, this is what I was saying before. By the way, before I say that, I have to quote Garrison Keillor and his statement, guilt, the gift that keeps on giving. So at any rate, uh, Harlan, this is what I mean by talking about direction. Okay. Um, you have to be careful uh, only because if you keep trying to do every single thing, it can become mechanical and you don't want it to become mechanical. Now, I'm not trying to look for excuses, but flagellation, self-flagellation only goes so far. And Golda is right in that it's the only useful piece about it is the degree to which it encourages you and, and, and helps you to try and, and do what you can do, all right? Uh, sometimes you could have a desire to do everything, but I don't think the idea is for it to become mechanical. Although even then I'm gonna say that in some cases, if you can't do better than being mechanical, that's better than nothing, okay? I, in, in some cases, not in everything, but it really has to do with the general direction in which you're going. So much of it depends on the, the society in which you're living and the culture. And, but, but the point is here we are, we're studying, that's why. Studying Torah is connected to love. It is, it is worth everything and we're doing the best we can. I mean, believe me, I'm, I'm right where you are in terms of the, you know, my sense of not doing enough, but you do what you can do. And um, I, I think, you know, you should hear what Golda says and do the best you can. But uh, isn't it true that when, okay, if you're, if you're eating a meal, but it doesn't include bread and you haven't said mozi, you don't have to do beer cut. I mean, you're not obligated to do beer cut, right? I mean, so, but it's fine if you do, but it, you're not. No, no. Well, there's it, a different bracha, like there's a bracha right. achr achronot, you know, for, for other things. Right. You anticipated my answer, Shira. <laughs> In fact, I don't right. know that you should do Birkan Amazon, frankly, if you haven't had bread. Right. Right? I mean, knowing what the proper response is, is important. So there's a difference between baked goods and bread. Okay. And there's a, a, a main shalosh. There's a, a sort of very abbreviated version of Birkan Amazon that you, you recite after eating baked goods, not bread. And then if you don't eat baked goods, there's a very short one line, basically thanking God for creating appetites within us, which allow us to survive. That though we recognize that those appetites are there because if we didn't have them, we wouldn't survive. <laughs> so again, how mindful can you be and uh, memorizing these particular brachot, et cetera. Um, you, you need to have, you know, uh, some common sense, I suppose, to say, you know, uh, as you try to develop these particular things. So I'm going to stop the recording here. Yep.